This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. A VPN is a virtual private network, which is a secure way to keep your data safe on the internet. ExpressVPN encrypts data which protects users from the threat of hackers who aim to steal private information wherever you are. A fantastic feature of ExpressVPN is that users can change their IP addresses to places all over the world, hiding their own IP address in the process. This is a fantastic way of watching Netflix programs or films which are not available in your region. For example, Studio Ghibli films are not available to stream in the US, but with ExpressVPN you can change your router location to the UK in order to gain access to the content. Personally, I love to watch Vikings and instead of paying extra for Amazon Prime to access it, I can watch it for less on Netflix by changing my location on ExpressVPN from the UK to Australia. ExpressVPN is fast, easy to use and the number one rated VPN provider by Wired and TechRadar. Customer support is also available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Find out how you can get three months free by clicking the link in the description box or going to expressvpn.com slash dark curiosities. Denise Jeanette Sullivan was born on the 27th of May 1946 in Connecticut, USA. In 1961, at 15 years old, Denise, or Denny as she was more commonly known, lived with her mother, 41-year-old Jeanette, and her four-year-old sister in Rockville, Connecticut. Denny's mother, Jeanette, was divorced at the time, and in order to support her two daughters, she worked as a seamstress. In July of 1961, Jeanette's 55-year-old fiancé, Charles Boothroyd, asked the family if they wanted to go on vacation to Utah. The family agreed, and Jeanette and Denny decided to go with him on this holiday, leaving Denny's four-year-old sister with Denny's grandparents. On the 4th of July, Charles, Jeanette and Denny drove to Utah in Boothroyd's olive green 1960s Volkswagen. The family arrived at Dead Horse Point in Utah, around 17 miles away from Moab, and decided to visit a scenic route by the Ottawa River. It was at this point that the trio met a heavy-set man with dark hair and a dark complexion near to Dead Horse Point. They spoke to this man for around two hours whilst he was explaining the history of the area to the family, with they themselves taking photographs. As the night was closing in, the two parties went their separate ways. The strange man driving away in his beige-coloured sedan without mentioning his name. Charles, Jeanette and Denny ended up driving down the same road, as they were planning to stay in Moab for the night. However, after a couple of minutes driving down the road, they came across the same man's beige sedan parked at the side of the road with the man underneath the car, seemingly having had some sort of mechanical issues. Charles pulled his vehicle over to the side of the road where he and Jeanette decided to get out of the vehicle to ask the man if he needed any assistance. The man requested for them to give him a flashlight so he could look under the hood. However, upon Charles giving the man the flashlight, something extremely sinister happened. The man grabbed the flashlight and threatened the family with a 22 caliber rifle demanding money. Fearing for their lives, Charles and Jeanette obeyed the man. Charles threw his wallet onto the road and Jeanette emptied $250 out of her purse. Just as Jeanette started to walk away, however, the man shot her in the head, killing her instantly. Charles was subsequently shot twice in the face with the rifle and he fell to the ground. 
Somehow, Charles Boothroyd miraculously survived. As Charles lay on the road, bleeding profusely, the assailant rolled Jeanette's dead body into a nearby ravine. In a flat panic, Denny, who was still in the car, threw herself into the front seat and attempted to drive away. However, upon putting the car in gear, the assailant got into his own car and followed on behind her, eventually running into the side of the vehicle and forcing Denny off the road. The man got into the Sullivan's car and dragged 15-year-old Denny out, placing her into his own vehicle before driving away. This was the very last time that Denny Sullivan was seen alive. The gunshots that were fired by the assailant were actually heard around two miles away by an oil worker, who decided out of curiosity to investigate what was going on. Upon driving down the road, the oil worker passed the Beige Sudan, racing erratically along the road before coming across the wreckage of Charles Boothroyd's Volkswagen. A little further down the road, the oil worker found Charles lying in a puddle of his own blood. After Charles informed him about what had just happened, the oil worker called for assistance over the radio, and an ambulance arrived on the scene about two hours later to treat the injured Charles, closely followed by law enforcement who began searching for Denny Sullivan. They searched all night through various means, including on foot, using aircraft and boats, but to no avail. Within a matter of days, police managed to apprehend a main suspect. The man in question was a 35-year-old marine veteran, Abel Benny Aragon, an unemployed coal miner from Price, Utah. His sedan vehicle fitted the description of the vehicle in question, which had driven off with Denny inside. Also of note, the police found that the damage found in the vehicle coincided with the paint scratches and dents that were on Charles Boothroyd's vehicle. Police also found two sets of footprints nearby, one of which matched Abel Aragon's, with the other prints presumably belonging to Denny Sullivan. This gave police strong reason to suspect that Aragon was involved in Denny's disappearance, despite the fact he had no previous criminal convictions. There also appeared to be no obvious motive as to why Aragon would kidnap Denny. On the 6th of July, when two FBI agents stopped Aragon for questioning, he pulled out a 22 caliber pistol and shot himself in the temple after telling the agents to, quote, prove it. Aragon passed away in hospital around two hours later. During their extensive inquiries, police got various witness statements stating that they had seen Aragon at around 2am the morning after Denny vanished. He was alone. Around five hours after the shooting at Dead Horse Point, Aragon arrived at a mining camp in Polar Mesa. According to various sources, Aragon had actually stayed at Polar Mesa camp numerous times before, and as a result, police conducted a search in the area and found some damning evidence against Aragon. Aside from finding pieces of clothing and a shovel hidden in a bush nearby, police discovered the 22 caliber rifle which was used in the murder of Jeanette Sullivan and the attempted murder of Charles Boothroyd. This was enough evidence for police to conclude that Aragon was indeed the man who was responsible. A rather interesting piece of evidence came to light when a truck driver claimed that Aragon had spoken to him at a truck stop, handing him a letter which was to be mailed to his family. Police managed to intercept this piece of mail and within its contents was some money and a letter addressed to his wife, stating how much he loved her and their five children, but there was no mention within the contents of the letter regarding any crimes being committed or premeditated. Authorities strongly believe that Denny Sullivan somehow met with foul play on the night she vanished. However, despite extensive searching for the 15-year-old, she has never been located. Police suspect that Sullivan is most likely deceased, possibly buried in the Polar Mesa area. 
At the time of her disappearance, Denny Sullivan was 15 years of age, standing at approximately 5 feet tall and weighing 90 pounds. She is of Caucasian descent and had brown, just above the shoulder length hair and brown eyes. Denny had also previously suffered a fractured leg and she was also known to wear reading glasses at the time she was abducted. She was last seen wearing a blouse, slacks and a pair of red canvas shoes. The case remains unsolved and one of Utah's oldest missing persons cases. If alive today, Denny Sullivan would be 74 years old.